Hey there guys, I am sharing a little bit of the story of my skin cancer journey. Um, I am I'm sharing this for a few different purposes. So um, first of all, I want to help people who might be um, going through the same thing or who might be wondering about, you know, something that seemed a little bit off with their body. Um, so I want to hopefully offer a little bit of, of encouragement there. Um, and I'm also sharing it because my husband and I have a business where we do a lot of videos and I've been on Facebook for two months with band-aids on my nose and our customers might wonder, um, what is the deal? So I'm going to share for that reason too. Um, as well as for our, our friends and our Facebook friends and stuff like that who um, might be interested in an update. So that's the story. So um, for those that don't know me, my name is Angela Moeller. I am 39 and the dermatologist said I am too young for skin cancer. I agree, but I don't know. I guess skin cancer doesn't know hold I am. So anyway, the deal. It's currently March of 2018. I have had band-aids on my nose for over eight weeks. I had surgery on January 8th. Prior to that, how um, what led up to this was back in October of 2017, um, I started to notice just a little bitty raised bump on my nose and it wasn't like a freckle or a mole. It was like regular skin color, just kind of raised. And it kind of developed like over the course of a month. Um, and it kind of appeared kind of fast, which made me wonder a little bit. So I was kind of just keeping an eye on it to see what was going to happen. Um, and then in having a conversation with a friend of mine, um, not about the spot, she just happened to tell me about her sister's um, dealing with cancer. Like she dealt with cancer in her 20s and then had, had something come back now in her 30s. And it kind of got me thinking like, you know, man, that stuff happens to people all the time. I better not mess with it because I would feel really bad if I ignored something that um, maybe my body was telling me to get checked out and I ignored it and then let it turn into something bigger that was devastating to our family. Like I would feel really bad about that. So I thought in order to... Um, in order to be the best I can be for our family, I need to be healthy. So I thought I better get it checked out. So um, the next day, I um, called a dermatologist. Um, I chose to go to a private practice person. If you're in southern Minnesota and you're interested in, like, who I actually went to and stuff, send me an email. I'd be glad to give you that information. I won't talk about it for purposes of this video, but I'm happy to talk to people about that if they want to know. So I went to a dermatologist. Um, I was able to get in really quick and he just took a look at it and he said, yep, I think we better um, check that out. So the next week he did a biopsy. He could have done it sooner, but it was like Thanksgiving time and he said I could wait if I didn't want to have to mess with like being bandaged over Thanksgiving. So I waited, um, had the biopsy. That was pretty simple. It was like getting an injection, kind of like um, when you get a filling in your tooth, you know, they use that needle that feels like it's going out the back of your head like that to numb it. Um, that was the worst of it. And then they just use a little tool. It's like takes a little chunk out. And then I just had that like a Band-Aid on that for a week. At the time, I thought, oh, are you serious? I have to have a Band-Aid for a week on my nose? I don't think I left the house that week for real. If I only knew what was coming down the line, though, like, that wouldn't have been a big deal. So anyway, did that, went back um, a week later to get the results of the biopsy. It was squamous cell, squamous, squamous cell skin cancer, which I had never heard of before. But um, the way I understand it is like, okay, so if there's like a scale of scariness, Basal cell is over here on the less scary side. Melanoma is way over here on the really scary side. And then this squamous squamous business is like in the middle. Um, not too bad, but not as good as it could be. So what the doctor said was that I needed to have this surgery to remove the spot. And the way that he did it was a surgery called Mohs surgery, M-O-H-S, that removes everything. Um, all the cells that have any cancer in them at one time so that when you leave there you know that everything is gone everything's taken care of and you don't have to worry about anything else like cropping up that maybe they didn't get it all or whatever um so 
we uh, thought about that. I brought my husband Matt with me to that appointment. I would recommend that for anyone if you are going to um, get the results of something, like bring somebody with you because um, it's scary to get news like that and it's helpful to have a second set of ears um, and just comforting too. So um, that's what we did. Um, found out the deal there. Like I said, he recommended that surgery and I said, okay, well, how, you know, how serious is this? Like how soon do I need to take care of this? And he said, um, then of course we're getting close to Christmas time, you know? Um, so he said, you can wait till after Christmas. That's okay. He said, you can wait one month, but don't wait two months. I thought, okay. Um, and I think the idea there is that I think generally um, that type of skin cancer typically isn't a real fast or aggressive growing type of thing, um, but it can be, you know, you don't know what it's going to do, so better to get it taken care of and don't give it a chance to spread anywhere else. Um, so that was um, what we opted to do. We scheduled it for January 8th, so like right after Christmas. Um, so that we could kind of just have Christmas, have our like time off with the kids while they were home from school and then deal with it and just start the new year, get that out of the way. Um, in the meantime, I started, um, you know, you have a lot of time to think and that's not always a good thing. Um, but I did a lot of researching. I talked to a lot of people. I just want to make sure I was doing the right thing and it's hard with medical stuff because we don't all understand all of it. I'm not a doctor. Um, but I, I got, you know, different, different people say different things. Um, some thought that maybe, um, the surgery was overkill in my situation. Um, so I did a little research on that. Um, and it sounds like in some cases that surgery might be more than you need. Um, it might be like erring on the side of caution. And then in other cases that is what needs to be done. Um, so I kind of researched that idea. I talked to some friends who are nurses, um, I got a little bit of a second opinion. I just kind of did a little research. I just needed to kind of have a comfort level about it to know. Um, and it, the, my other option was to try um, to use like a topical cream um, that would like basically kill the cancer cells. And then, um, then I guess there would be like testing after that to see if it worked. And then if not, then you would go the route of the surgery. Um, so we thought about that and ultimately decided that I didn't want to do the wait and see approach. I really didn't want that scary little naughty spot to have any more time to cause any more trouble. I just wanted to deal with it and be done. Deal with the surgery even though that sounded scary. I just wanted to do it and be done with it. Um, so that is what we opted to do. So I'm going to stop the video here and then start another one just so it doesn't get too long. But I will do another video on um, how the surgery went and then what happened after that and what I've kind of learned from it. So hang tight. <laughs> 